we drove up the valley to begin our trek to Machu Picchu. Blindfolded mules were loaded up with tents, food and packs. There are many trails to Machu Picchu. The longest is a six day trek under the shadow of Salcante, which means Savage Mountain. Viewed from Machu Picchu's main sundial, the Southern Cross is above Salcante summit when at its highest point in the sky during the rainy season. The Incas considered Salcante to be one of the principal deities controlling weather and fertility in the region west of Cusco. We could see our lunch tent all alone in the valley as we climbed higher and higher. At last we came to our first campsite. 4,200 metres, just below the mountain. Avalanches came often and we could hear them into the night. Next morning we were treated to amazing views. way up, slowly but surely. The pass high up on a saddle at almost 5,000 metres was the first challenge of the day. Joel, our guide, built a little llama out of rocks we had collected. Below us were brilliantly coloured glacial lakes. The horsemen led the way into the next valley. We made our way down the steep slopes and descended for the next seven hours. A few llama herders live up here, 
We passed a few communities as we descended. Finally, we met the river and followed it down to the camping spot. It was Maya's 10th birthday. The cook had spent hours baking a cake the night before. She will bite and that's the custom in Peru. After the scene, he, she has to bite. Okay, one, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> Beside our campsite was an old Incan fortress, standing guard at the entrance for two valleys. The stonework was still standing after 400 years. We spent the morning following the river. We came at last to the stone steps that signified the start of the Inca Trail. In addition to the many beautiful flowers, we also saw a poisonous beetle carrying a giant spider in a cord. At one point a flock of llamas passed us, just before our campsite amongst the trees. On our fourth day, we made our way up to Dead Woman's Pass at 4,200 metres. It was a steep climb, but at last we made it to the top. Below us, we could see other people coming up the path. Looking ahead, we could see the next pass of the day. To get there, we would need to follow the trail up after first descending into the valley. way up, we came across the ruin of a guest house for Inca runners who carried messages between the towns. Continuing to climb, we came across a small, high lake. And at the pass, we could see into the valley beyond. Clouds hugged the sides of the mountain, just above a small Inca ruin. Climbing down from the ruins, we made our way through a bamboo forest until we came to our campsite. The Andes were now our companion on this, the fifth day of our trek.
After passing a waterfall, mountains and ruins, we came up onto a ridge. Joel pointed down the valley. There, high on a ridge, was the Incan flag of Machu Picchu. With our destination in reach, we sped down the mountain. But our breath was taken away by the spectacular ruins of Winyawina, built into the steep hillside overlooking the river. There are two housing complexes connected by a staircase and fountain structures and surrounded by agricultural terraces. As we explored the site, there was one more surprise. Wild strawberries. We relaxed for the rest of the day and enjoyed our last dinner of the trek. We rose in the dark so that we could be at Machu Picchu to see the sun rise. The park entrance opened at 5 a.m. The trail was completely packed with people. After a steep climb, we came through the sun gate and saw Machu Picchu down below us. We watched the sun rise in silence. The path from the sun gate was now lit up, leading to the mummifying rock. Steep mountains are on both sides of this city, giving strong protection. The site is relatively intact, since it was not discovered by the Spanish and was unknown to the outside world until 1911. The temples contain the finest stonework, particularly in the Temple of the Sun. All the rocks were carried and carved here not mind. In Incan culture, people must not break the stones in the ground. We made our way down into the valley to the riverside town of Aguas Calientes, which means hot springs in Spanish. Although this little town marked the end of our trek, the train line marked the start of the next stage of our adventure. We would travel across the Altiplano to Lake Titicaca on the border of Peru and Bolivia to see the Reed Islands and the birthplace of the Incan Empire, the Island of the Sun.